All right, now let's start the process of setting up device for our users, AKA podcasts. Uh, so let's go over to Chrome and search for rubygems.org. Um, now that we're here, let's uh, search for device. So the device gem is one of the most popular uh, Rails authentication systems. You can see it's got 10.7 million downloads. Uh, so it's used quite a lot. So it's on version 3.1.4. To begin, uh, we're gonna add this to our gem file. Uh, so copy the latest to your clipboard, then go to your application. Let's uh, close out of these. Oh, dang it. Uh, go back to the terminal. I'm gonna oh, do sublime dot. Okay, now I'm gonna open up the gem file. Uh, below the S doc, I'm going to paste in the device gem. Save that. Now let's go back to our terminal. I'm gonna do a bundle install. Now uh, let's go back to Ruby Gems. And if you go under links, click on the home page, you'll get taken to the device documentation. Uh, let's scroll down a bit and it tells us how to get started. So we've already added the device gem. Next thing we wanna do is add, do the Rails generate device install. So let's go ahead and do that. Rails G device colon install. So it gives us a few things uh, we need to do. Step one, ensure you have defined a default URL option in your environments file. This is for the action mailer stuff, uh, which we're not gonna be covering in this tutorial. Uh, but if you wanna go ahead and play with that, I would add this to your uh, config slash environment slash development dot RB. Uh, the next one, ensure you have defined a root URL. We have done that. We added the root to, and it's going to the welcome controller index action. Uh, we want to make sure you have uh, ensure you have flash messages in your uh, application layout. Uh, we do not, so I'm just gonna copy these for now. And then let's go to Sublime and I'm gonna search for application HTML. And then this is our application file. Um, and the yield is where every other template gets uh, rendered in. So above the yield, let's add those. Whoops, only copied one. Let's copy the alert as well. So uh, this is for when a user either signs in or signs out and uh, a message is displayed to the user. Like for example, you have successfully signed in or you have successfully signed out, etc. This is what will display those messages to the user. So we wanna make sure that's on every page. So we're putting this in the application layout. Next one, if you're deploying to Heroku with Rails 3.2, only, uh, we're using Rails 4.2, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we are going to customize the device views, so we want to copy these over. Let's uh, go ahead and do Rails generate device colon views. And you can see this uh, copies over all of the device views uh, into our application. If we go under app views uh, device, we now have access to all the forms and such. All right, so let's go back to the documentation. Uh, we need to do a generator. Uh, normally we would do Rails generate device uh, user, uh, but in our case, a user is going to be a podcast. So what we are gonna do is go back to our terminal. Let's uh, clear this. Let's do Rails generate device uh, podcast. Uh, make sure you spell it just like this, Rails generate device podcast and then hit enter. And then this creates a migration file. It creates the podcast.rb model and also creates uh, some routes for us as well. So if you wanna look at the migration, let's uh, copy this and I'll do sublime and then paste that in. And you can see uh, it creates a table with the email, encrypted password, reset password, all that good stuff. Um, so that looks good to me. Let's go back to our terminal and do a rake db migrate. And now this is uh, creating that table and adding it to our schema file. So now that that is done, you can do uh, rake routes. And this will show all the routes that device created for us. For example, device slash registration slash new is a new podcast registration. And you can see the URL pattern is podcast slash sign up. So let's uh, go to that and test it out. 
Let's go to localhost, and we'll do uh, slash podcasts slash sign underscore up. And we get a undefined method devise for. And that is because after we install devise and set everything up, we have not uh, restarted our server. So let's uh, shut that down by doing control C, hit the up arrow and do rails S again. Now if we go back, refresh, you can see we get the sign up. And actually, our, some of our styles are already taking effect. Oh, it's going 100%. Uh, obviously, we don't want that, so we'll clean this up later. But for now, let's just uh, test signing up. I'm going to do uh, mckinsey at unicast.com in our password. And we will sign up. So you can see the flash message uh, shows, uh, welcome, you have successfully signed up. And if we go to our Rails console, let's go back to our first terminal. Let's do Rails C for the Rails console. And I can do uh, podcast.count. You can see we have one podcast since we just created one. If I do podcast, you can see uh, what the podcast is. ID of an integer, email, string, encrypted password, string, etc. cetera. Um, and this was all done for us by device. So later we're gonna add attributes to the device model in order to uh, be able to do things like add a title of our podcast, a description, and all that good stuff. But for now, uh, let's hit Control D, and let's do a git s. So you can see we've done quite a lot. So I'm gonna do git add dot, git status. All right, now let's do a git commit with the message, git commit dash am. And what I'm going to do is, uh, and I'm going to add a message of add uh, device, add and set up device gem. All right, that looks good. So let's uh, go ahead and add some links uh, and make these not static. So in our welcome index file, Remember, if we go back to our terminal and do uh, rake routes, we can see the file, or we can see the routes we have uh, created from device. For example, to create a new, or to go to the signup page, we'd use the new podcast registration path. I'm actually gonna copy that. And I'll show you how we create a dynamic link. So instead of having a ahref uh, button, we're gonna do a some embedded Ruby so we're going to write a link to tag, and this is going to link to create a podcast, just like uh, before down here. And then you do a comma, and then we're going to go to the link, which is going to be new podcast registration, and then we're going to append underscore path. And then we need to do a comma and let's add the class from down here. So what we'll do is add class colon and then quotes. Let's add button and button highlight. And then let's close the embedded Ruby tag. Now, if we delete this, go back and refresh, you'll see nothing has changed except if we click on this button. Oh, well, uh, you can see up here, you are already signed in. Devise is smart enough to know that we are already signed in, so it won't let us go to the uh, sign up, sign in page. But if I copy localhost and do it incognito by doing command shift N, paste that in, uh, we're not currently signed in. What I'm going to do is click sign in and we go to the sign up page or click uh, create a podcast and we'll go to the sign up page. Awesome sauce. So that is all working correctly. Uh, the next thing, let's uh, add a link to the sign in. So I'm going to copy this and uh, I'm going to change this ahref tag. Uh, let's link to sign in. And instead of new podcast registration path, we're going to go to the new podcast session path. Uh, you can see up here. So we'll do session path. And then uh, let's remove this class. Now, if we go up and refresh, we can click sign in. We're already signed in, but if we go to localhost in incognito, we'll go to the login page. 
Awesome. All right, one thing that is bugging me is if you inspect the element up at the top, it has that white bar, and that's because uh, it's showing the P and alert uh, regardless of if there's a message. So let's uh, tweak that. So let's go back to our application template. And what we're going to do is write some uh, conditional Ruby. So if alert, and then close it, we will do the P notice to have that in. Let's tab it over. Whoops. And then else, we're going to do an else if notice then we'll show the notice. Whoops, I uh, did that backwards. Uh, but I'll just end that real quick and then flip it around. So if it's an alert, we'll show the alert. Else we will show the notice. Now, if I go back and refresh, since there's currently no alert, it will uh, hide that by default. But say I uh, click sign in again, it will show up. Awesome. So let's uh, close out of that file and the gem file for now. Let's create or copy this create a podcast link and do the same to this link up here, create a podcast. Uh, this is all going to be the same, except we're going to remove the class. All right, everything's good. So next thing I want to do is uh, add a conditional statement where if a user is signed in, they'll see a uh, sign out path. Uh, otherwise, they'll see the explore, sign in, and create a podcast path. Uh, to do that, what we're going to do is under the UL, what we can do is write some conditional Ruby um, unless the user is signed in. So unless podcast signed in underscore in question mark. Uh, normally we do unless user signed in. Uh, we get this from device by the way. But like I said, normally we do user signed in, but instead we created a uh, podcast when we ran the device generator. So unless podcast signed in, um, we will show these links. Um, else, close that, we will uh, show a link to Let's close that li. We're going to do a link underscore two. Is that a sign out link? And this is going to go to the destroy podcast session path. And we're going to do a method of delete and close that. And then we'll do an end. Uh, later, we'll add a link to their dashboard and well, we also want to show the explore link as well. So let's add that now. Since we're signed in, we have a link to explore and sign out. I'm going to add a link to the dashboard just because even though it won't go anywhere for now. Do a href and let's say dashboard. Refresh. All right, so let's try signing out. So if we successfully signed out, as you can see from that message, um, and now we see the explore, sign in, and create a podcast. Let's uh, test signing in again. Uh, McKinsey at unicast.com. Enter my password. Click sign in. Perfect. So everything is set up correctly with device. Okay, before we move on, let's uh, do a get status. Get S. If you want to see what you've done in your modified files, you can do git diff um, and it shows you what you've changed. Hit Q to get out of that. And then I'm going to do git uh, commit dash am, say add a conditional Ruby to notifications and navigation. Now let's do a git push, push that up. And finally, let's do a git push Heroku master. 
So that is now done. If we go over to um, our Heroku app, Tamp Falls uh, 4865.herokuapp.com, um, I want to show you something real quick. If we go to uh, slash podcasts slash sign underscore up, we'll get, we're sorry, something went wrong. Uh, if we do a Heroku logs to check the log files, hmm, I thought that would show the um, error message, but I can't seem to find it. So basically what's happening is uh, we changed the database locally. Uh, we did a rake DB migrate to uh, migrate the database uh, to add the device model, uh, but we have not done that on Heroku just yet. You have to remember that locally and Heroku, these are two different um, databases. So to fix that, let's do Heroku run rake colon db rake db colon uh, migrate. So now if we go back and refresh, uh, we see the sign up page. And let's uh, test out that it works. I'll do McKinsey at unicast.com and enter my password, enter my password again, and sign up. Cool, we have successfully signed up. And if we want to confirm that, we can run the console just like we do locally, except we do Heroku run Rails C. This takes a bit longer to start up than it does locally. So now that that is done, let's do a podcast.count. And we can see one, let's do podcast, let's do at podcast equals podcast.last. The first ID of one uh, email is McKinsey at unicast.com. Password is encrypted. Um, and then it gives us all the other information. So everything is good to go. So in the next video, we are going to customize device and add uh, various attributes to our podcast model.